name is Olivia. And I'm glad you all made it up to Mount Square today. You all picked probably the best day all week. So the, for the sap to flow, it needs to be below zero at night and above zero during the day. It is that temperature fluctuation from cold nights to warm days that actually causes the sap to move up and down the tree. So when it's cold days and nights, of course, the sap is just in storage in the tree's roots. Trees are basically hibernating all winter. They're not growing, they're not producing anything. They've just stored extra food from last year in their roots to feed their new leaves when the days get warmer. And then, of course, the season ends with days and nights above zero. Because then the leaves start to open, the buds start to open, and as soon as that happens, we can't cut the sap anymore. It would, uh, if we try to make maple syrup out of that sap, it would be buddy. That's what we call it. It tastes off. Buddy, because like you cut the sap when the trees are budding. Yeah. So the last run of sap we usually call the frog run because it's when the frogs start singing. That means the ground has started to thaw and the season is over. So the season length varies every year from four to six weeks. Some years it's really bad. Now, for anyone that has seen sap, what does it look like? For anyone that hasn't seen it, this is sap. Water! It looks exactly like water because this is, this is 96 to 98% water. 2 to 4% sugar. And that sugar content varies year by year. This year our sap is pretty low. It's only about 2% sugar. Maple syrup, on the other hand, is 67% sugar. By law, it has to be that. So, to go from 2% sugar to 67% sugar, there is only one thing we need to do. You gotta boil it, exactly. And by boiling it, you evaporate out the water parts so you have left the sugar. So pure maple syrup is only made from maple sap. There should be nothing else in there. If you also see in the grocery store, you're buying organic maple syrup, I would never pay extra for that because it's the exact same as non-organic maple syrup. Because what maple syrup is not organic? I don't know, I don't know about most maple syrup, but we're not spraying pesticides on our trees. So, it's... I'm a bit of a so, the, yeah, the only thing we do to turn our sap into syrup is boiling it, and that has stayed the same for thousands of years. Just the process by which we boil it has changed. So we have the three old-fashioned methods outside. You, has anyone seen the traditional First Nations method? Yeah, that's a pretty interesting one. They move hot rocks into the sap to heat it up. So still the idea of boiling it, just very slow process. And then we have the cauldron method from the early pioneers. Then we move on to the flat pan method once they developed the technology to make cast iron flat. And then they just went a step further. I like to think they decided eventually they wanted a roof. So they developed these sugar shacks and the modern day evaporator machine behind these. So it's still the exact same thing. Its only job really is to boil the sap. It just does it in a little bit of a more complex, quick way. So the sap starts at the back of the flue pan. And this is what a flue pan looks like. You also have the diagram up there. So the flue pan is corrugated on the bottom, which just increases the surface area that's exposed to the fire underneath. So it gets really hot, much faster. So the sap will flow back and forth through the flue pan, and in the process it gets really hot, because you never want to add cold sap to almost finished maple syrup. So that's just going to slow everything right down. So we heat the sap up and evaporate some of the water, and then we move it into the flat pan. And there's actually an automatic float um, that sort of monitors the level. So when the flat pan starts to get a bit low, because more of that sap is evaporated down, then the sap from the back will flow. Then we move it from the, there's two finishing pans up there. So the one at the back, it will move into the one at the front when it's almost done. And it'll boil some more. And then we officially know our sap has turned into syrup when the computer tells us. <laughs> so, we have a very good system here, guys. Most places, or a lot of places, will take the temperature manually, or, or if they're really old fashioned, you can get a ladle and just pick up some of that oiling syrup or sap, and then watch it fall off the ladle, and you can see how it falls. But the last few drops should hang on and cling on. So, people will just know what to look for, they'll know what it's done. We have a bit of a, an easier system. So, you'll see two numbers on the right hand side. The yellow number is 219. That's the degrees in Fahrenheit that syrup boils. And then 149.2 is the current temperature of the sap in the finished So we're very far away from being served. When those two numbers align, 
The spouts on the right hand side will automatically open up. The syrup will flow out through that white felt filter, which removes any impurities in the syrup. So there are natural impurities. As with that oils, it creates some like a gritty sand substance called sugar sand. It occurs. It, it, it's totally natural, but it tastes gross. So we remove that with the filter. It's like the consistency of sand. And then it uh, goes into that metal bucket. We then take that syrup over to the pancake house. And if you had our pancakes, that is most likely our syrup that you need. Sometimes in bad years, we do have to import syrup elsewhere. But we've had a decent year so far this year. And then in the candy cabin, we take that syrup as well and we turn it into maple can. And it is maple sugar. So it's what you get when you cook maple syrup longer. And that sugar is actually sugar that was in these very trees just last week. So pretty neat. You're actually kind of eating a piece of our forest when you eat that sugar. So we have this year five to 459 trees tapped, which sounds like a lot, but over the course of the average season, one tree will give you 40 liters of sap. Does anyone know the ratio of sap to syrup? So one tree over the course of the average season will give you enough sap to make one liter of syrup. So if our season was a decent season, we would make just over 400 liters of syrup, which is actually just enough for us, our use here. So the stuff in the gift shop has a beautiful amount of gray oil on it, and on the back it says it comes from Boise, which is another um, Ontario, local Ontario producer, but not us. How does the maple syrup get its color? It gets its color by cooking, because the, the sap is clear, but as the sugar cooks, if anyone has cooked sugar at home, it caramelizes and it sort of goes brownish. And so you can see there are different grades of maple syrup, all 57% sugar, the difference in the color is just how long it has cooked for. The longer it's had to cook, maybe you started with less sap, for example, where you have older machine, it just takes longer to cook, you end up with a darker syrup. And that darker syrup tends to have a stronger maple flavor. So it's all personal preference which one you prefer. So that is the process of sap to syrup. So uh, thank you very much. If anyone has any questions, you can ask me. You're also welcome to hang out under this beautiful warm fever. Yeah.